as we mentioned earlier, we had uh, the beginning of earnings season today. Uh, a couple of big banks, also some uh, pharma names, industrial names out with their latest results. We're joined now by Ken Leon, an analyst at CFRA, to talk uh, a little bit more about the big banks and what we saw. So, Ken, I guess just walk us through what stood out to you out of these results at a JP and Wells. And, and then we'll get into a little bit of how you're trying to think about um, valuing and, and analyzing a business in this kind of environment. Yeah, so the, the, today was probably monumental calls really since the financial crisis. And it's a question of how can you protect yourself to the downside? Uh, so the focus was really about adding to reserves for non-performing loans. You know, we saw big numbers for JP Morgan and Wells Fargo. It's likely that we'll see more in the second quarter. Uh, when you look across the businesses, you're immediately seeing some non-performing or de delinquencies in consumer, credit card. Uh, but then, of course, there's distressed industries. Uh, all of you have spoke about whether it be transportation, uh, hospitality, and the big one really for the banks is commercial real estate. So these are strong banks compared to 10 years ago. Uh, also a measure we look at, which is total loans to total deposits, is very manageable. Um, so the banks are really solid here. They also wanted to echo uh, for investors that the dividends are secure, even though there's a moratorium in terms of share repurchases. I just want to ask you a little bit about the amount that JP Morgan has set aside for <clears throat> loans that could potentially go bad. And some of that is based on the assumption they were saying that uh, GDP could call fall some 25% and maybe we'd see unemployment around 10%. But JP Morgan economists themselves, as well as other banks, have had much starker assessments of where we could be going. I mean, JP Morgan economists have forecast a 40% fall and we could see a 20% unemployment rate. So is JP Morgan setting aside enough money to deal with these loans? Yeah, so we took a closer look at where that $6.8 billion for reserves was going. It was mostly the consumer. So they had more confidence on the visibility of uh, there's 30% of U.S. households really didn't pay their rent check in April. When you look at the commercial side, which is lumpier and bigger numbers, I still think there's more they have to do on adding to reserves. The big one that we did work on is commercial real estate. You know, and Ken, I think what's interesting about this environment, and maybe it's not interesting, but I'm curious your thoughts here. We're talking about stresses on both the commercial um, and the consumer side of these banks' business. Is that different than what we saw back in 2008? And just, I mean, I know that the banks have more capital now, but are they facing a wider variety of stresses across uh, their lending portfolio today than they were facing 12 years ago? So they're obviously much better capitalized today. And that's credit to the Fed starting in 2012 with the stress tests. Uh, again, that measure, I when you go back right at the beginning of the financial crisis, they had loans that were 120% to total deposits. JP Morgan today, that's down at 60%. So they got more room in terms of solid total assets. Um, nonetheless, you know these are severe scenarios. Um, I would say that if we can get through the second quarter, things should look up in the third quarter. Uh, both of these bank managements today are looking for a second half recovery. Uh, no one is thinking V-shape, uh, but the ability for the street and for analysts even to guesstimate on earnings outlook for the second half of this year uh, going higher uh, from the lows you know, will be a positive. You know, and the stocks have bounced back quite a bit, but they're still down about 30% from their highs. And Ken, just thinking about the macro picture here, do you anticipate that there will be some sort of consolidation among investment banks as some banks struggle with uh, trying to overcome and, and come out on the other side of this in 12 months, 18 months? You know, it's a good question. There's 5,000 banks in the U.S., probably small banks, but the largest banks greater than 250 billion, they got about 55% of total assets. The one area that is not coming up in media is talking about the non-banks or the shadow lending area. And this is a big deal for consumer mortgages because they represent about 75, 80% of mortgage originations. So I would be watching that versus everyone in compliance with 
rules and regulation from the Federal Reserve and other agencies. All right, Ken Leon is an analyst with CFRA. I really appreciate the time. Talk to you soon. Thank you.